Welcome to Wisdom Comes from the Lord, from Divine Providence by Emanuel Swedenborg, Vegetarian, Part 1 of 2, on Words of Wisdom. In the 18th century, a great Swedish scientist and inventor, at the height of his career, began to see visions of heaven, spirits, saints, and angels. He saw Lord Jesus, vegetarian, come to open his inner eye, which allowed him to travel in the celestial sphere and talk with different spiritual beings. This mystical experience transformed the scientist into an enlightened spiritual leader with a new understanding of Christianity. His name is Emanuel Swedenborg, vegetarian. From 1744 onwards, Emanuel Swedenborg spent over a decade of his life writing down what he saw in his spiritual voyages in more than two dozen books. His visions of heaven and the afterlife, his realization that God is love, and his discovery of the Holy Bible's deeper meanings are just some of the revolutionary topics he bravely documented. The life and works of this remarkable spiritual world explorer inspire people to this day. Today, it is a pleasure to present selections from Divine Providence, where Emanuel Swedenborg, vegetarian, expounds on how our wisdom comes from the Lord. The Lord's Divine Providence has, for its object, a heaven from the human race. The more closely one is conjoined to the Lord, the wiser one becomes. As there are three degrees of life in people by creation, and so from birth, there are specifically three degrees of wisdom in them. These degrees it is that are opened in people according to conjunction, that is, according to love, for love is conjunction itself. Love's ascent by degrees, however, is only obscurely perceived by people. But wisdom's ascent is clearly perceived by those who know and see what wisdom is. The degrees of wisdom are perceived because love, by its affections, enters the perceptions and thoughts, and these present themselves to the internal mental sight, which corresponds to the external bodily sight. Thus, wisdom appears, but not the affection of love which produces it. It is the same with all a person's deeds. They are aware how the body does them, but not how the soul does them. So they perceive how they meditate, perceive and think, but not how the soul of these mental activities, which is an affection of good and truth, produces them. There are three degrees of wisdom, natural, spiritual, and celestial. People are in the natural degree of wisdom during their life in the world. This degree can be perfected in them to its height, but even so cannot pass into the spiritual degree, for the latter is not continuous with it, but conjoined to it by correspondences. After death, people are in the spiritual degree of wisdom. This degree also is such that it can be perfected to its height, and yet cannot pass into the celestial degree of wisdom, because neither is this continuous with the spiritual, but conjoined to it by correspondences. Plainly, then, wisdom can be raised threefold, and in each degree can be perfected but only to its peak. One who understands the elevation and perfecting of these degrees can see to an extent why angelic wisdom is said to be ineffable. So ineffable indeed is it that a thousand ideas in the thought of angels in their wisdom can present only a single idea in the thought of people in their wisdom the other 999 ideas being unutterable, because they are supernatural. Many a time have I been given to know this by living experience. But as was said, no one can enter into the ineffable wisdom of the angels except by and according to conjunction with the Lord. 
for He alone opens spiritual and celestial degrees, and only in those who are wise from Him. Those are wise from the Lord, who cast the devil, that is, evil, out of themselves. But let no one believe that they have wisdom because they know many things, perceive them in some light, and are able to talk intelligently about them, unless their wisdom is conjoined to love. For it is love that through its affections produces wisdom. Not conjoined to love, wisdom is like a meteor vanishing in the air and like a falling star. Wisdom united to love is like the abiding light of the sun and like a fixed star. A person has the love of wisdom when they are averse to the diabolical crew, that is, to the lusts of evil and falsity. Wisdom that comes to perception is perception of truth from being affected by it, especially perception of spiritual truth. For there is civil, moral, and spiritual truth. Those who have some perception of spiritual truth from affection, by it also have perceptions of moral and civil truth. For the affection of spiritual truth is the soul of those perceptions. I have spoken with angels at times about wisdom, who said that wisdom is conjunction with the Lord because He is wisdom itself, and that the person who rejects hell comes into this conjunction and comes into it so far as they reject hell. They said that they picture wisdom to themselves as a magnificent and highly ornate palace into which one mounts by twelve steps. No one arrives at even the first step, they said except from the Lord by conjunction with Him. And according to the measure of conjunction one ascends, also, as one ascends, one perceives that no person is wise from themselves, but from the Lord. Furthermore, they said that the things in which one is wise are to those in which one is not wise, like a few drops of water to a large lake, by the twelve steps into the palace of wisdom are meant goods united to truths, and truths united to goods. The more closely one is conjoined to the Lord, the happier one becomes. The like can be said of degrees of happiness, as was said of degrees of life and of wisdom according to conjunction with the Lord. Happiness, that is, blessedness and joy, also are heightened as the higher degrees of the mind, called spiritual and celestial, are open with people. After their life in the world, these degrees grow to eternity. For more information, please visit sacred-texts.com I think the turning point for me was an article that I wrote from the information from the research done at UCLA in California on their track and field athletes about dairy products and their fitness and general health on and off dairy products. And the upshot of the article was that these athletes perform better they recovered better, they trained better, and they were 100% aerobically more fit off dairy products than on dairy products. And I thought, well, for half the training, I can be as fit as I am now. Greg Chappell, vegan. Noble viewers, thank you for watching today's Words of Wisdom 